Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see somewhere behind me, it's tropical houseplants. Today I want to just have a bit of a chilled video with all of you. This is one for all of us to just relax, have a bit of a chat, and essentially it's going to be a bit of a repot with me. I think a lot of a lot of us here on YouTube will do repots with me. It's a good place for all of us to answer some of your questions and maybe to show you how we transition some of our plants out of propagations into kind of their more forever homes, at least as a stepping stone towards becoming a large and established plant, which is what I'm going to be doing today. We're going to be diving into my prop box. It might be that some parts of this video is going to be more of a point of view because I cannot get my camera to focus on multiple things. The bits that I can, I will do that, but I will also show you close-ups of my propagation box. Please don't judge me too hard because I went away for a couple of weeks. I don't know if people were aware. I went back to see my family back in Greece and a very lovely individual that was taking care of my collection. I they did everything and I did kind of show them, look, you need to switch on this grow light whilst because this is a new grow light. Did that as grow light get switched on for the whole two weeks I was away? No. So there was some issues. Most of the plants were salvageable and these things happened, but it also goes to show that even propagates, they were without an awful lot of light for nearly two weeks, basically. So, and they did all right. So it just slowed them down a bit. Uh, I've also realized now when I've just opened up the propagation box, that the sphagnum moss is going towards the dry side. So I might also be doing a bit of watering. I will also try to do a moss pole the way that I think uh, a lot of people, including Sydney plant guy, uh, do this where there's like a, a section. I've, I've just got like regular kind of acetate that you would do for an overhead projector for the people old enough to know what an overhead projector is. Because somebody told me the other day, they're just like, what is this? And I'm just like, I feel ancient. Yeah. <laughs> and also the netting as well. So you, this will make more sense when you see it. I've never made one of these before, so you will probably watch me get really frustrated with it because everything I do for the first time gets to be a bit frustrating. But without further ado, let's just dive into it. And I've got some of your questions that have come over uh, and we'll kind of answer those as we go along as well. Right, so I've moved you all a bit lower. Hopefully my lighting isn't messed up. Uh, first question actually the people had is, what does that say behind me? Because I know sometimes it's on the newer videos. That was actually a gift that I got over Christmas, which I thought was hysterical, where it says gardening, because obviously indoor gardening, but gardening, so excited, I wet my plants. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, let's let's have a look at some of these uh, propagates there down on the floor. So let me lift them up. So you can see my state of my propagation box. And considering that most of the things that you're seeing with leaves now were wet sticks about two, three months ago, doing well. Uh, don't do a me and maybe label what things are because I've got Splendids in here, and I've got Philodendron Splendids, and I've also got Philodendron Gloriouses, and hopefully I should be able to tell by the backs of the Splendids which ones are the Splendids and which one are the Gloriouses. Maybe, yeah. I think it's kind of you can see the, the blush on the back side of things. There's also things that haven't really started taking yet, but. Let's dive into it and we can kind of see there's also, I'm trying to see, I might have to like do some close ups and point of view things. Actually, let's do that now and then we can kind of talk about what I'm going to be potting up today. Okay, I've got my prop box in front of me and I've got you so you can have a look. And I know people liked this last time, so I will do it again with my trusty water meter. That is a uh, Gygus. That is a glorious because you can see the blushing behind it. That is another glorious. I'm trying to see, there's also some nondescript chunks, which I don't know what they are. For now, we will know more when they have some leaves, if they get some leaves. These tiny little things, I don't know if you can see them, they almost look like they could be lecker balls. These are little Dioscoreas. There is also um, alocasia corm in here that had kind of rotted away and I was trying to rehab it. And this is the 
Ooh, I'm trying to think. This is the one that looks a bit like it could be a palm, and I will add the name at the top. There is an Amidrium Blue. This is, if anybody's seen my recent Albo video, that is the chunk of the Albo. It still hasn't got any leaves, unfortunately. And here we can see a casualty of some root rot, and I'm pretty sure I know what that is. Is there still green on this? Maybe. Yes, this, unfortunately, that you're seeing here is the last remaining chunk that I had when I chopped back my Philodendron heterocraspidum from the Equigenera order. This is a lovely, it was supposed to have highly variegated, and this is something a friend sent over because her plant had a lot of variegation and it's always struggled with mine, but I'm trying to bring it back to life and it's doing well. This is where you can see the damage that happened when the light wasn't on for a very long period of time, but it's salvageable. Um, there are some, even the chunks, most of the chunks when I'm touching them now, they have got resistance. So I'm assuming that they've started to root in more gloriouses, more splendids. There's another medium medium. There is some oblique columbia at the back, quite a few of them there. And I'm trying to think this was an uh, Therium that was struggling the mostest and it was getting root rot and I don't think it's doing very much. And I think that might also be dying off at some point, but we shall see. That was his last ditch attempt to survive. But yeah, let me bring you up and we can talk about the ones that I'm going to be repotting today. Hopefully that made sense. That was a bit of a quick and dirty tour of what we've got. So I'm going to like lift up some of these and see how they are doing. Ooh, I wasn't going to pot this up, but it might very well get potted up now based on what I'm seeing. And you will see in just a moment, I am trying to disentangle. Oh, an awful lot of roots, apparently. That's not bad. Let's have a look without stressing out this plant too, too much. Whoa, this really did root out. This has taken over most of the moss. That is massively impressive. Uh, oh, okay. So I don't know if you can see the level of roots on this. This is the uh, Amidrium medium, the blue one, or silver, I think it's sometimes called. And I didn't think this had an awful lot based on what I was seeing at the top of this plant. But look at that rootage there and there's also some of the advantageous roots that are happening along the stem <laughs> shockingly it's an amedrium so it's started running already but this might be a good one to trial on my new a moss pole so that is one that will definitely be potted up now for another question that somebody sent in and I think this was on one of the videos, and I've been meaning to come back to it. And I do apologize. I do try to get to as many comments as possible. I'm a bit time poor generally, because between filming, editing, and running my own business, and dealing with a small puppy and life, I usually can only kind of be around for the first 24 hours after I kind of post a video. So you'll probably get a bit more chit chat with me at that point. The slightly older videos, occasionally I might drop in and say hi or make a comment to somebody as well but it's not always the case i don't always have the time unfortunately however as i always say if you do want to reach me i'll put up my instagram there that's a, a place where usually i'm a bit more communicative because it pings all day long basically <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a question that came up was about somebody that saw my house tour where i was using clear plastic cups and i have burnt some holes all the way around and down the bottom when I was using these with Lekka. And somebody was saying, oh, this is the thing that you're doing and why do you do it for? I, For me, it's kind of the closest I can get to a net pot kind of situation with um, my semi-hydro without costing me the price of a net pot. And I'm pretty sure the way that I'm doing this is relatively unhealthy because I've just got a soldering iron and I'm just poking holes outside where there's ventilation, but it doesn't smell great. Um, and I will absolutely not take credit for this as an idea. This is something that 
one of a dear, dear friend on Instagram and also a follower. If you're around, say hi. I don't want to name you in case you don't want to be named. But if you want to name yourself, do that in the comments down below. But yeah, this was uh, something that I saw when I got my awesome Philodendron Dean McDowell swap from the plant swap. And this individual did this with the cups. And I'm just like, that is genius. I don't know why I never thought about that. And thanks for the tip, by the way, one way or another. I've been using this a lot more now. And I found that it really, really does help. Again, if you want to talk a bit more about your experiences with this and the genius that is this, please do so in the comments. But yeah, that was the reason why I was doing it. And so far, it's had some really good, good success. Let's have a look. I might see about the other medium medium, and see, oh, there's an awful lot of rootage on this one as well. I'm just thinking I might just go for a slightly bushier plant because that was the original reason why I made the cutting from my mother plant. Um, and actually, if the second cutting, of, wow, there's a lot of roots here, uh, has done well, which I think it has based on what I'm seeing. I don't think, is there a runner? Oh, there is a runner. It was just buried. Um, did I? accidentally chop that root mm, possibly um i wanted a slightly bushier plant especially because these can be quite slow to get going and these are all going to be going into um i always say to choose a pond but with a lot of my plants at the moment they're on the soil ninjas coarse semi-hydro mix and i'm pretty sure for the people that follow me in europe um Watch this space. I don't know whether or not they're going to be launching sometime soon in Europe or some some of their stuff might become available in Europe soon. But uh, yeah, you might be able to get your hands on some very, very cool substrates. But yes, I will definitely be doing this. And there is a runner, obviously, and it's got some of the advantageous roots. So this will also be going in with the other cutting just to get a slightly bushier plant because Anybody who has got a medium, medium knows how slow they can be. So yeah, doing that. Uh, there is also quite a bit of like the old petioles that are kind of mushing up. So is what it is. There isn't any roots. Oh, I just cut something. What did I cut? Where is that from? I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody else get frustrated with this when you put chunks in and you do forget what it is and there's so many other things in there and there's no leaves and I'm just like, you are something that is rooting and you are something that's probably going to get some leaves soon, but I do not remember what you are. So the thing that I was talking about before with the Dioscorea, uh, it was a sad, sad story. And I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos and they come out with these tiny little air potatoes and they're in here hoping for the best. It hasn't done very much at the moment, so I will move it to the bake. Um, Let's have a look at the alocasia because the other alocasia that was in here did recently get potted up. Mm, this one can probably go for a bit longer. You can see the roots aren't that substantial yet. I would like a bit more rootage on this before it gets its own little a space in a Lekka, believe it or not. So the people that were kind of saying, oh, you should try Lekka with some of your alocasias. I have done and generally it's been quite good. So. I'm late to the game. I am very, very aware, but I finally got there. But let's see about the leaf that was kind of turning to mush. Mm, so that one is rooted in, but that leaf has turned to mush and there is another leaf. So I might just let it be for now. Let's see if this stem from the heterocraspidum is actually rotted fully. There's rot, there's rot, there's rot. Mm. I'm pretty sure this stem is done. Oh yeah, that's 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 squished. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, in case you're wondering, I will bring it up. And apologies in advance because it doesn't look great, but you can kind of move. Yeah, there you go. You can see the kind of rot that's happening on there. I will do an update soon on the Equigenera order and specifically that plant. There is predominantly bad news for the Heterocraspidum, which is a shame because it is a plant that I wasn't expecting to fall in love with as soon as I saw it. And it's the only one that's really, really struggling. However, there is some good news on that one, but I will let that come up in the next video. All right, let's have a look at the Pink Princess. 
which seems to be doing well. Oh, it's also popped out. That is super cute. Oh, mm, no, it's still not got substantial enough roots for me, at least at the moment, but I'll show you kind of what it looks like there. And hopefully it will focus me this at some point in my life. There we go. But no, that's going to go back in and it's going to root out a bit more, I would say, until it kind of gets there. What is this? Is this coming from this? Oh, that's what that is. That's nice. Okay, remember the thing that I was saying before I didn't know because it didn't have any leaves? I know what it is now. It is a very, very runny, as in it's running, um, Monstera de Bayer. Because uh, I had to chop some of mine back. Is that like a root? It really is. Wow. So what I might do with this, because it's got some of the secondary roots there, I might re-chop it. Because otherwise there's an awful lot of stem here. Yeah, let me chop it. My scissors, before anybody asks, have already been sterilized. So they should be fine. But let me show you. The Monstera de Bayer, the roots aren't substantial, but I generally find that they don't tend to be. But this is enough rootage that I can at least put it in a pot and get it going. I want to try it in pond and see how that goes. But this is another one that probably will need a bit of a moss pole, to be fair. I remember the one I was talking about before with the gigas and the mushy leaf? I obviously manhandled it a bit too much and unfortunately it snapped, but I mean, the quality of the leaf isn't great. So I will leave that node still in there and hope for the best. There is a random node that is doing nothing. How is the Alba doing? Ooh. <laughs> uh, roots for days on the Alba, absolutely no movement anywhere else, but I will leave that in there until it starts getting a bit of a leaf. And then hopefully that should be fine. Mm. I wanted to see about maybe getting some of these other plants out of here. So let's have a look. I'm very aware that you've probably seen the top of my head a bit for this video. Hopefully that is okay because I'm trying to see what I'm doing. Oh, this gigas, however, please don't snap the roots. So there's a problem with growing this way. The plants generally do grow quite nicely and they go for a lot of rootage but then you get everything mixing underneath. Um, so when you try to remove things, it can, yeah, I've ripped quite a few roots there. However, I think this should be fine. There's only so gentle you can be with these plants. There is something that has rotted there that will just get binned. Um, and let me get some of this moss off. Um, but this has got some decent roots, actually. I don't know if you can see that is, Quite good routage. Um, let me get rid of a bit of moss. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's good. And that should take quite nicely to some of the I'm a blocking. Semi-hydro mix. Yeah, that should be good. Uh, I'm trying to maybe see about not taking too many things out because the more I take out of here, the more I need to water. Um, splendids, I do want to get a splendid out of here. And I'm trying to think which one's too high. Uh, this one, potentially. Let's get a splendid out. Uh, wow, roots for days. Oh, and is this the one that's going to be the most tangled, probably? Come on, my love. Mm, gently does it. Well substantial roots on this one. I'm trying to not ruin everybody else's roots whilst trying to get one plant out. Just for the people that were wondering what took me so long with this one little tiny plant to get it out. <laughs> um, it's the joys of everything mixing with each other. 
in the moss. And I'm really curious with this one because the Splendid for me has very, very thin roots. So I just want to see how it's doing. Um, right. Some of these bits are probably going to be fast forwarded or just cut out entirely. Okay, and in the meantime, I have made the moss pole. I might have to do a separate video on how to make the moss pole because that took a lot longer than I was expecting. Granted, it was the first time I was making it, and I also did not have a hole punch, which will make a bit more sense because I made one of these moss poles, which essentially is just an acetate from the overhead projector, like I mentioned earlier on, some zip ties, and some bird netting that you can get from garden centers a lot of the time. I could have gone for a slightly thicker mesh, but actually it seems to be holding up okay. The one thing that I will add, however, to this is the following. And it couldn't be one of my videos without a janky support stick for the win, obviously. And I will just shove it in the back just to give this a bit more stability. And I might bring that in a bit lower just so it can sit in the pot a bit easier. And then that should at least hold it a bit more upright. So what I'm going to do now is actually take the medium, medium blue cuttings and attach them to the moss pole first before I put them into the growing media. So I've got the first one here and I'll make sure that if I can, without snapping it, We'll add in the runners onto the moss pole and then let the roots hang down below into the growing media. However, it's trying to get the, <laughs> the roots that were attached to all of the moss to attach to the actual moss within the moss pole. Now, for a lot of people, it could be those plant staples, essentially, they're called. But I don't have any at the moment, or I do, but I just can't find them. And I will get these types of plant ties, the kind of wiry ones, and just create my own by just turning it into almost a bit like a bobby pin, essentially. And then this way around, I can just bobby pin it into the actual moss pole just so it can actually attach. And I'll show you in just a second what I am doing. But this could be a nice, a simple solution. And it's just until it attaches. Let me bring it up a bit closer and you can see what I'm doing. I am just going over and just making sure that it's captured within that moss just so that it can actually attach. Now, the one thing I will say about the medium medium, I hadn't realized there was runners growing in the actual moss. And I probably wouldn't have let the runners go for as long as they have done. But we are where we are and we make good of the situation as much as we possibly can. So you can see there what I have done is I have attached it onto there and then the roots are still hanging out at the bottom. Let me attach the other one on as well and then we can start putting in some of the growing media. Okay, and now they are both on. They don't look like the best thing in the world, but they will do when everything is all set up. And now this is where it comes in, this comes into play. So getting this at the very bottom of the pot, making sure this sticks on top. This is going to be a heavy, heavy pot, basically. So I want to see if I can actually get that sitting as far in as I possibly can, just because the roots of the actual main stem of the plants are actually substantially lower. But I'm less worried because I'm putting it in semi-hydro that there's going to be any real issues. And here you can see how it's going to be. This is a bit heavy at the moment because this is 
quite wet. But what will happen is I will put this into a cash pose so it will at least have some of the resistance so it doesn't want to tip over essentially. Now one of the other questions that I had come up and it was an interesting one because it was somebody was asking if I've ever had the Hedera Helix which is the English Ivy whether or not green or variegated. Yes is the answer to this. I have had both. I have also had a more interesting one if you can find it. So there's an upright growing one so it grows in a column rather than it being a vine. And the other part of the question is, <laughs> do I have any tips? You might not like what I'm going to say. Yes, the biggest tip I have is keep it outside. It is, for lack of better words, a spider mite magnet. It's not particularly difficult to grow outside, at least here in the UK, so it can do okay even when it gets really, really cold. I mean, it's called the English ivy for a reason. I think it's called an English ivy. Um, but yeah, it grows like a weed here. Outdoors, to be fair, I've seen it growing in Greece as well, where the summers get quite, quite hot. So down, the lowest it will get down to is maybe about 10 to 5, maybe sometimes down to zero as well, but they survive. Uh, I mean, they can survive in the UK and the winters here can get colder than that still. But... Uh, the summers can go up to 48 degrees in Greece, and they're fine as well. So this should be okay further out outdoors. I am probably not going to be the one that's going to tell you, yeah, this is a great house plant. I didn't enjoy owning it at all. I know some people do, but the spider mite issues and all these things, whilst outside you really don't need to fuss it, it will do its own thing and it's fine. In the house I found that this is a plant that you need to hover around. It's kind of specific. I found it doesn't ever really want to go fully dry. It doesn't like to be super wet all the time. It can be a tricky one. So if you can, this might not be what you want to hear, grow it outdoors rather than indoors and control it because I am still trying to remove the ivy from everywhere in the garden that the previous owner left me with. So, and this has been nearly two years now, so that tells you how vigorous of a grower this plant can be. But I think the video might be getting a bit too long already, so I might start wrapping up here. And to wish everybody a great rest of the day. I've still got a couple of things that I need to prop up basically or essentially put them onto moth poles or transfer them onto the growing media, namely the Monstera Dubaia and the Glorious. The Glorious is going to go onto moth pole that's very similar to what you just saw now with the Amedria Medium Blue. The Dubaia is going to go onto my standard cork Board, and I've got a video at the top, I'll link it there on talking about the successes that I found with that one essentially. But I think that's everything I wanted to cover today. If you've got any further questions, maybe for the next uh, repot with me, drop them down below. I'd love to hear them. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.